guys, it's me, Brian with Happy Thumbs Gaming, and I'm back with more LEGO Star Wars The Skywalker Saga. Today we've got Kef Beer Crash Site Free Room. Now I've got my fingers crossed, uh, hoping that I said that even remotely close. There is a character that does refer to the planet as Kef Beer, so I'm assuming that's the right say, but who knows? Uh, hopefully I didn't slaughter that too bad. But guys, we got 23 Kyber Bricks, five character tokens, a data card, as well as a ship that we're gonna find. And there's kind of a fun fact about that ship. When we get there, I'll share it with you. But here we are, we are actually in Hoth space. We have just completed the area and got all of, uh, well, Echo Base and Hoth space all done did you can see here we got five of five and two of two granting permission to go ahead and leave the area so next up we're going to pull up our galaxy map and check out old kef beer and of course crash site is in our site <laughs> this is actually where the death star crashed and uh, it's a fun little area Keep in mind, we have removed all non-essential gameplay, cutscenes, travel, and all of that. We even have sped this video up ever so slightly and have quick links down below if you're in a hurry or looking for a specific item. Now, the order in which you do these does not matter, but uh, you might pay attention to the names of these tasks as they are easy to track in your menu. First up, we're going to go ahead and target a brick that's locked in a cage right in front of us, and it's actually labeled Welcome to Kef Beer. Now, I'm going to recommend you stand right in front of your ship parked here as you have a good sight on all of the targets. Turns out there are four targets, two sort of behind you and two right sort of behind the cage. So uh, if you stand right in the middle where we showed you right in front of the vehicle, you should have access to all four of them. Simply ring them all off and collect your Kyber Brick. Woo to the hoo. We are off and running. All right, now, uh, there are a couple of moments here that uh, I, were a little regrettable. This one is not one of them, though. We do recommend that you walk up to Buddy here with the shovel, old Mark Coe, and have a small conversation with him. I do believe it is important to have that so you can unlock the One-Eyed Wookiee's treasure, which is a quest that's split between this area and another on-planet location that we'll take you to later. Now this next Kyber Brick over here, the Overlook Order, is a pretty simple task. It's simply locked in a cage, and we need to drop down below, as I sort of indicated by looking at those grapple points. And once we get down here, there's actually the solution on the wall. It's four, two, three. So I'm gonna to toggle back up to my other guy who happens to be still close enough that we can go ahead and solve this bad boy. Simply press the icon on the left, or the button, through, uh, psych four times, four, no, one, two, three, three times. Press it so it's number four. Press it one time in the middle and a couple more times on the right. And if for whatever reason that does not solve your puzzle for you, I suggest dropping down and looking to make sure that your solution is the same. I say that because I've had a couple of instances that were not consistent. That's right, instances that are not consistences. <laughs> All right, next brick is along the shoreline. We're gonna sort of go up the northeast side. So we're going counterclockwise here from where we spawned. We're gonna drop down and find ourselves another cave just a little bit back down the old rocky path here. And inside we're gonna find a gold and black box that we can go ahead and melt with our favorite bounty hunter. In our case, it's Django Fett. That's right, we love us some gold. We'll go ahead and collect that glittering grotto kyber brick. Now this next spot here, this is related to a shooting gallery challenge. Now we've talked about the challenges before. We will have a separate video for this at a later date, but only once we complete them all throughout the free roam. Just note that if you follow along with our free roam videos, you should have most of these found, if not all of them. To be honest with you, I'm not exactly sure where all of the locations are and if they will be relevant to Kyber Bricks on each planet area they are located on. So there may be a couple that uh, aren't related to the area that we'll get at a later date, and most of them will probably get uh, collected as we go along. Now, in this particular case, I am really bad at aiming, and I apologize. But the good news is, is that I'm really bad, and I still beat it on my first go. So really all you need to do is shoot enough fish to gain yourself over 2,000 points to get that gold. If you do, you're going to be rewarded with a Kyber Brick and be able to uh, move on or keep on with the keep it on, as we like to say. But you can see my aim is not so good at times. Um, in all fairness, my scouting run, oh, I was flawless. I think I got like 4,800, 4, I think. I think it's in twos, so I don't think I could have got 900. But anyways, uh, I do believe you get 200 per fish. 
So basically, you need to take out 10 within the time allotted or more, and that should be pretty easy. Now, you do get rewarded some studage as well, and if you look up top, we are officially over our 48 million requirement for our next data card purchase. So be looking for that in a future video, maybe right after this one. Hmm. Look at that. We got that gold. All right, we'll collect our Kyber brick, and we will be on our way. Next up, we're going to make our way a little bit further down, and there should be another cave. And this Kyber Brick is called In Good Company. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to get a protocol droid and split him in half. Luckily for us, we have 3PO already out. He's going to go ahead and stand on one of the switches, split himself in half, and drop the other half onto the other switch. And it's going to reveal not one, not two, not three, but four total targets. And Booyah Kashao, go ahead and knock them all out. It's going to open the cage and reward us with that good company, Kyber Brick. Yeah, you know, we're getting pretty high up there in the Kyber Bricks. And, and in the grand scheme of free roaming, we are likely getting close to the quarter mark, if not maybe a little bit beyond it. That's pretty exciting. Lots more to go, but uh, definitely got some ground behind us now. Speaking of ground behind us, we're going to run into the mainland a little bit and find a bunch of huts. Specifically, a couple on the far right side, and there happens to be a gentleman standing in front of one of the doors, and he's sort of protecting a, a little museum. Only problem is, we are missing the key card to get into said museum. Now, luckily for us, we actually have the location, and it happens to be in the hut just down to our right. So, by talking to him, it unlocks the rumor, which you could have paid money for, and you could have talked to her, too, to find out more, but we're just going to go ahead and grab this NES controller... It's wireless. Did you notice that? <laughs> I don't know why. Those things just look like the old school, su or not super, just the Nintendo Entertainment System controllers. We'll go ahead and give it the old swiperoo. It should open the door. I'm going to go ahead and reassemble here. And look at that. We got a nice glow. So inside we go. <laughs> All right. Inside we need to break some silver bricks there to go ahead and do that. Pick your favorite villain character and turf a nade and booyah kashow. It should puke out a brick, which gives us that first order field trip. Now I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit of stud collecting while we get our, look at that. See, 500 out of 1200 kyber bricks. That is a lot. Well, there's a lot left too, though. Whop, 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 whop. All right, uh, next one is actually on top of a hut, and it's pretty easy to get if you know where to go. There's a few ways you can do this. You could actually use the force and lift a character up with one of those boxes just on the outside of the hut. Or you could go to this nice little climb spot right over here and jump up, and you could actually use a scavenger or a bounty hunter with a jetpack to go ahead and glide over to the rooftop. Now, because we already got Django Fett out, we're just going to go ahead and get our glide on with the jetpack, and it's sufficient to get up top. We'll get the old tiptoe on the old plank, and thatching a plan, Kyber Brick is officially ours. Now we're going to go ahead and advance a little bit further across the old hoodage area here. And on the back, kind of north north side, I guess I was going to say northwest, but it's sort of like the tip of the north area. We're going to find this giant rock with a kyber brick up top. You can actually reveal a handful of handhelds by shooting the rocks off and grapple and pull your way up to the settlement sightseeing kyber brick. Look at that. We've already got eight of them in our rear view mirror. Next up, we're actually going to do a big... Uh, mission. This mission requires previous stuffs. I should have paused it and let you know, but basically, if you have not completed Hoth yet, you need to go back and do Echo Base. And if, uh, I believe there is one other requirement, so if you're not seeing this gal here, it's possible that you have not been following along, and you might need to purchase a rumor and maybe do an off-planet requirement, which would be to go back to Hoth and finish up. There's basically a, at least one mission, the Wampa's Wonder, where you got to take the Wampa and basically try to rescue him, get him to the front side of the base in Echo Base, and he is a crucial part of this mission. Now, it is possible that there's some other requirements as well, but to be honest with you, when I scouted this area, I did it before I did Echo Base, and I finished it all the way on my PS4 save, and the last mission I did was this one, so I ended up finding out that there was an off-planet requirement, thus I actually switched it up and went and did Echo Base first, and now we don't have an off-planet requirement. So pretty cool how that works. But for you guys playing along, don't worry. It's not a huge deal. All you have to do is just go to Echo Base, complete that mission, which you can use our video because we've got it all documented for you. 
and you can skip to the quick links and everything and just do that one and come right back or uh, you can always save this one for later go to you know echo but you can do whatever however you want but for video purposes we wanted to make sure we had the uh, as close to the perfect order as possible and so far we haven't had to do any off-planet requirements uh, that were in the middle of the level. So all of our tracking has been specific to the area we're in. Uh, hopefully I'm not confusing you by talking about it. All we've done here in this particular mission is follow along the old pathway. It takes us over to a cliff's edge, and we find this giant, I, I don't even know what type, I'm sure it's told me what it is, and there comes three people running around finally. But All right, so uh, we've officially collected our first area, or our first creature in the area. Next, we're going to go and take off to Dragon Snake Bog. Now, again, I've removed all the travel time to make this video a little bit more efficient. In fact, later we even cut out uh, a pretty significant chunk of uh, going back and forth between the Death Star crash site and the actual town area. Anyways, here we are. We got a, a, another Astro... No, psych, it's a protocol droid. <laughs> Fooled you, almost. And uh, we're going to go ahead and talk to him and find out that we're basically looking for... It's one of those little gallimimuses. Like, it, it, I don't think that's what it really is, but it reminds me of Jurassic Park and uh, the little guys, right? They look like those little raptor-esque minis. And there you go. So you'll find him sort of running around, and there is definitely a hot spot. And, and then you got to depleter his meter, which I'm not a huge fan of this because look how long it takes. Like, I've got the overpowered Bounty Hunter Blaster. I am repeatedly hitting this guy, and I'm not taking any damage off. Like, there must be, like, a cooldown between when he can take damage and when he can't. So I thought, okay, let me get up close to personal, see if maybe punching him will work, and it doesn't seem to go any faster. So uh, it's just unnecessary. I feel like it's really long. In fact, I could take three PO out and, like, two or three punches, but this guy, not so much. He goes on forever. But eventually I depleted that meter, and we go ahead and call the collection... And it comes in and swoops him away. Look at that. Make sure you go through this animation. Otherwise, you'll have to come back. Last but not least, we're actually going to take off and go find ourselves. Uh, well, we got to go to Echo Base. Land where the old Wampa was. And that's what I was talking about. So it's possible that maybe you haven't completed Echo Base yet. Hopefully you have. Hopefully you've been following along with our order. And if you have, it's going to be really simple. Wampa is actually over to, well, right now it's off to the left-hand side. In fact, if you followed that mouse droid with the Stormtrooper helmet on it over there, it would actually lead you right to him. So as soon as you gain control, you're actually going to run off to the right side. And luckily for us, it even tells us on the map where the hotspot is. I look around, I'm like, he's not over here, he's over in the corner. And boom, look at that, he is covering his eyes and everything. I'll show you on the map real quick where he is. And, of course, we don't speak Wampa, so we'll have to toggle over to our protocol droid. I do believe a Jedi or Sith can speak, but that might only be uh, for the gonk droids. I know that there's some that they can listen to and talk as well, but not all. But look at that. We've got all three needed for that frustrated farmer, so we're going to come back and deliver them. And for doing this, we're actually going to get Rothgar Dang as well as Kyber Brick number nine. So it's like a, it's a payday. We get double paid here. And you can see those uh, those creatures just kind of hang out there sitting there, which is pretty cool, I, I guess. I guess. All right, we got some Spideys on the back wall that are going to yield us some studs. So we got to collect them all. Got to get them all. Got to get them all. Keep in mind, too. There was a giant acorn on the ground there. That is a seed for a upcoming mission. And I don't uh, disregard that character tag in there. We're going to go ahead and get this one right up top in the left corner because that's where we was. This one is actually interesting. This is the Untitled Orbach game, which is uh, definitely a reference to the Untitled Goose game, right? <laughs> Thought it was pretty cool. Buddy's name is cool, too. Carib Dis is the character token we unlock. Not the Keeper. That's a different guy. But we actually get a character, Carib Dis. That's pretty cool. I, I'm not familiar with him. I'm probably saying it wrong, too. But this is a simple task. We actually just have to trudge around and make our way to the blue caution symbols with the exclamation point in them. There are three of them scattered throughout the city here, and each one of them leads you to an Orbach that you can hop on and then return him back to his place. Now, one of them is actually right in front of where we started, so that's easy to find. The other one's off a little bit further, and the third one is actually on a rooftop. But if you play your cards right, you actually don't need to get on the roof to get him. You just kind of run off to the side, and he will yeet off the ledge. And there you go. Woo to the hoo. All right, we'll go ahead and hop on him and bring him back to... Look at me. Don't mind me going for a little stud run here. 
<laughs> got to get them all. Got to get them all. All right, here we go. We're rolling up in there. And Booyaka Show. Mission Cook a Cuckoo. Wait, what? You got another one we're missing? That's true. There was a fourth one. He gave us the wrong amount. This one is actually all the way over by our taxi or where we landed originally. And uh, it's pretty simple. You just got to run over there and grab him and bring him back. Another one of those moments where, like, I get it. You want to get the most out of this game. You want to make the tasks uh, not tedious, but yet not too easy. But this, I mean, there's a few of these that just, I, I don't know why they, I would have simplified this. I would have left it at three, and I would have just called it good. You don't get an extra break. You don't do anything. Like, it's not, you just get a character token. It's a simple task. And, uh, you know, again, I, I'm not complaining. You can, <laughs> a lack of confidence in that statement there. But, uh, you know, I, I just feel like some of these just get drawn on and on and on. There's a few of them that are like this. Look at me. Woo-hoo. All right. Big hops. In we go. And Booyakashow. I am impressed. You managed to catch Orbad. Apparently, he was tough to corral. No problem for us, though. He'll go ahead and reward us with that character token. And now we have an opportunity to actually earn a Kyber Brick as well. So by completing that mission, it unlocks a race. Ooh, it's a race. I hope I win. We'll go ahead and talk to him, address all the stuff that needs to be said. And basically, we're going to hop on an Orbac and just make our way around. And this mission is actually called Orbac in the Saddle, which is kind of funny. But uh, these are pretty easy. They show you uh, which one you need to hit by being the green orb. It kind of shows you where the next one is by providing a blue one. Lots of leapage here. I feel like we're in some sort of like a horse show, like a, what do they call it, an equestrian meet, perhaps? I don't know. It's definitely different than what I'm used to. It's a big hoppus, for sure. I feel sorry for them little clod hoppers that are having to take those big jumps. Now, a little recommendation I have here. You'll notice that I'm actually not jumping over all of the uh, jumping points. I'm kind of running off to the side of most of them. I definitely recommend avoiding those jumps as much as possible because you kind of tend to get hung up on them or stuck, and, and, but, but not by jumping around them. <laughs> we are out of here. All right, so we have, uh, what, ten, nine more gates, eight more gates, seven more gates. You can see on the left-hand side, it gives you a nice little counter, and I do believe I mess up right here. I should have gone hard left, and I went right. I went for the blue when I should have been going for the green. There it is. I barely missed it, too. It was just off screen. And up we go, last two, three, there we go, two, <laughs> and one, da, 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 da. gold, cook a complete, we got it. 90 seconds is actually pretty forgiving, so Orbach in the saddle completed, and we're going to run way back over into the town where we just got that mission, and guess what's up next? You guys uh, in the market for a data card, perhaps? Because guess what? Uh, there's a data card hanging out right behind this building that we've been messing with. And it's finally presented itself on the old map. This is likely one of the easiest data cards we will find. As long as you know the location, all you got to do is just run behind the old hut and woot. So we got it. So good news is we actually have plenty of loot that we can go ahead and buy our next multiplier. As I already mentioned, we'll be doing that likely in the video right after this. So... This should be a Saturday release video. You'll likely see that on a Tuesday. All right, next up, the one and only ship for this area. It's the Resistance A-Wing. And you got to, don't go to facing waterfalls. Please stick to the ships and the tokens you're used to. All you got to do is pull the plug and build up the bricks. There's actually two sets. Now, fun fact for you. When I did my scouting run on the PS4, there was actually a ship token floating around inside that cave under the waterfall. I'm not sure why it wasn't there for me. It legit just rewarded it to me or awarded it to me, and I took it. But you might have to go in there and swoop it up. You might not have to. Either way, as long as you get it, that's all that matters. All right, next up, we got a Kyber brick inside one of the huts. Up in the hut, up in the hut. We're going to jump up, grab some studs on the way in, and this one's called Cozy Cooperation. Now, uh, it might seem like uh, there are a need for two protocol droids in here, but in fact, you don't need them. So what's going on is there are four switches, and three of them are currently covered right now with a red bubble. We're going to go ahead and stand on the one switch right in front of the fireplace, which will actually open up the next one in line. Simply toggle to your character, 
and let's have him stand on it. Toggle back to your original character and basically just go back and forth. As long as one character is standing on the next one in line, it should open up the next one in line, right? I said that funny, but you get what I'm saying. Uh, just make sure that you do onesies, twosies, threesies, foursies. And once you get that fourth one, go swoop it up. Uh, you know, you could split up a protocol droid into twos twice and stand on all four pieces too. That would work as well, but you really only need two characters out and just work your way down the path towards the end. All right, next up, we've got Kyber Brick number 12. This one's called Mad Crops. And earlier I pointed out there was an acorn down by the river. We're going to need to find two other acorns and get them planted into this area. Yeah. Luckily for us, the map actually shows us where the pluggables are by uh, indicating them with a purple little icon. It's almost like an arrow-like icon. And we know there's one over in the water. We know there's one right by the hut that the mission starts at. And the final one's actually over kind of behind us now uh, along the wall there. Whoopsie, I have no idea. Really, I was just trying to pick it up. I wasn't even trying to converse with him, but buttons are the same. So right place, right time, I guess. All right, inside, we'll insert, and we've got two of three. And, of course, if you ever need to look at your map, feel free to pull that up. It should show you, but luckily they're all scattered close enough that it shouldn't be too far. Your compass should show them well enough. And, all right, all three are there. Now we need to use the force. And we'll switch on over to somebody. Looks like we got Anakin out. Angry eyes. <laughs> yeah, uh, I don't know why they're yellow. I mean, it's yellow eyes because he's a little, I don't know. I don't know if he's supposed to be, like, uh, deficient, <laughs> malnourished, or what's going on there. I know, he's just angry. I get it, I get it. Once you water them and they all sprout, they are going to leave behind some blue pieces, build them up into a kyber brick, and be done with the Mad Crops quest, or I guess it's a mission. I keep wanting to call them quests, but they're, they're missions. They're not quests. Same difference, really. But All right, next up, we've got kyber brick number 13. Now, tell me, shoreline smash through. Does this ring any bells for anybody? Where where's the shoreline from? Does that does that ring any bells for any gamers out there? Recently I played a game, maybe you've heard of it, Uncharted. Yeah, in Uncharted 4, there is the whole shoreline baddies, right? Like there's that whole group. Um I feel like that's sort of related, although it's also on the shoreline. And it is a smash through. So I don't know. May maybe there's an homage here to the Uncharted series, a little Nathan Drakeage. But you come inside, and I feel like it has to be. Because look, we're climbing and swinging on vines, double jumping and missing. That sounds like Uncharted to me. That's how I play it, anyways. <laughs> I'm bad at landing some of those uh, yeets. But shoreline smash through, cook complete. I can't guarantee that that's an homage to Uncharted, but I feel like that's probably a tip of the cap to old Drakey and his friends. All right, next up, we've got, uh, well, we've got quite the long mission. It's actually called Kef Beers Battle Gears. And we're going to unlock a character token, K3R1. But this is quite, uh, uh, listen, I, for the video purposes, I go and I start this mission and I complete this mission. I'm almost going to recommend you kind of hang out over on the other side and then just bring these bits back and report to Buddy later. But it's up to you how you want to do it. Uh, but basically what you got to do is you got to start the conversation and he's going to tell us that we need some scrap parts that are going to be located over at the crash site itself of the Death Star. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to need a taxi. So just ask me. There's actually one right down there. You can see it's guiding us right to where we need to be. And once we get there, we're actually just going to go ahead and catch a ride. Now, again, for the video purposes, we have removed all traveling. So uh, this is like a two minute journey to go out there. I'm not sure why it takes so long to load it. It is really cool the first time you see it, but it does become pretty redundant. So uh, there we go. We've gone ahead and we've left and arrived. And as soon as we get here, we're going to make our way to the little blips on our compass where we're going to find some parts by smashing things in the area. Now, luckily for you, if you're watching along, I know pretty much where they are based on my scouting run. And look at that. First one's in the corner there. We'll go ahead and swoop that up. Now, there is a lot going on here, guys. There are plenty of kyber bricks. There are some other items scattered throughout that actually, uh, they're those, uh, what do they call them, super super counters? There are 10 white boxes. In fact, there should be one right there, but it's missing. Uh, I already got it in my story on accident. But uh, be careful not to hit those, because later it might be a little confusing trying to find all 10 of those pieces. Now, we need to go up a few levels, so I'm going to use this cool trick where I jump up and grapple up, save myself a few of those handhelds and climb up points. 
Uh, feel free to try it on your own, but just note, too, that if you're struggling, just go the regular intended route. It'll be a lot quicker. Make your way all the way around until you get to the old uh, grapple point. I guess it's more of like a, uh, it's not really a vine, it's a rope. We'll go ahead and climb all the way up top. There's another one of those white boxes related to a kyber brick we'll get later. It's actually one of the last ones we get, just to keep things simple. And, uh, well, it's nice timing on our way out of here, really, but... All right, make your way all the way over and around to the astromech panel. We're going to need the help of either R2 or BB-8 or one of the other astromechs. And, of course, solve the puzzle from the inside out. So spin it around, lock it up, go to the outside, boo you shout, hit the button. And now we've got this platform that's going to pop in and out. And all we need to do is get all the way to the top. Although I, uh, I don't make it on my first go. I struggle a little bit here, peeps. I sorry about that. So uh, we'll go ahead and let's try that again. And this time I'm going to try it with uh, somebody with a little better double jump. Now, I know I've mentioned that a few times. Like most characters, if not all, do have the ability to double jump. But some of them actually jump a little bit gooder, a little bit better than the others. Uh, like, some, like, for example, Django has the jetpack. He can double jump, but when you double jump that second time, it actually gives you the jetpack, not necessarily what you're after. So, all right, we are looking officially for our third piece here. I don't know if you caught that second piece back there. I probably should have pointed it out. Might have to track back a few seconds to see it, but uh, we've got the second one. Now we're looking for the third piece. We're in the third area, and this one should be tucked in. Uh, I believe it's right behind us. Right behind you, Brian. Right, right, right behind you. Yep, I, I think it's right there. And the, now it's still to, right, right. Yep. Booyah, Kisha. There it is. All right, floating around. Ooh, we got a purple too. Love it. All right, so now we have all three of the first pieces, and now we're gonna make our way across. Now I'm not really willing to to plummet to my doom, so we're gonna go the way that the game is telling me to, which is up and over this plank here. Ooh, there's a gonk droid down below. That's a character token we take on here in a hot second. And we make our way all the way over to this ledge, and it's actually hiding right. It should be right in that piece on the right there. Boom. Okay, there we go. We got one of two for the second type. And now we got to go down this hallway all the way to the end. And inside this room, one of these pieces should have it. Now, most of the pieces that we smashed look almost identical. So once you kind of know what piece you're looking for, it makes it a little easier. It should be right there. Yep. All right, so we got them all. Now, there's also a buddy there and a password terminal, which we'll come back to that a little bit later. There's a lot going on on this Death Star side and a lot of back and forth and up and down because I believe there's six levels right now. That's a lot of levels. All right, so it's not very often I do a hard edit like that. And, but what I did was I just removed me dropping all the way down and jumping on the taxi. Really, I just saved us all about two minutes of running around uh, by removing the travel time and the dropping down. So simply make your way all the way back down and around. But this is what I was talking about. If you wanted to stay out there and finish all the Death Star stuff before returning to this mission, I do believe that is a possibility because you have the parts that are needed, and I think you could take it on another task without having to, like, go back and redo it. I don't know for sure, though, which is why I went ahead and just completed it. Once you bring all the parts back, though, he asks us to go ahead and build up our own little scrapper and now we're going to go ahead and actually have a battle. That's right. we got to fight against the Catastrophe Nature. And, of course, he gives us a pretty cool name of our own. And, oh, this is funny, too. Marry me. Oh, I love you. Oh, it's so great. And then we've got Emperor Pain Patine. You get it? Instead of Palpatine, Pain Patine. <laughs> All right. So what we got to do here is simply uh, attack this other little robot and deplete his meter. Pretty simple stuff. We're going to need a protocol droid to go ahead and access it. So switch to 3PO or your favorite other droid. And go ahead and hop on and gets to get. Now, there are a couple of different ways you can attack. You've got the shoot option, which for us was R2. Likely pretty similar. Should show you the controls on screen. we got attack, which is just like a cha-cha-cha-cha-cha. The old punch. Quick, up, close, and personal. And then, of course, we got the jump as well. I'm using the jump to sort of get out of the way. Uh, I, I try to shoot him as I'm going to and from him, but ultimately most of the damage is done by giving him the old dancing lessons. Cha, 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 cha. And then, of course, I wait until that red caution zone fills up about halfway, and then I bail. And that should be enough time for you to escape. Now, once you deplete his first meter, sadly, he calls in the cavalry and brings in one, two, three, four, five, six other baddies. Now, luckily, their health meters are much smaller and pretty easy to take down. 
but you know it can get overwhelming so don't get caught up in between all of them and definitely pay attention for the big attacks coming from the catastrophinator because those will definitely do more damage than these little guys but uh, focus on the the red guy of course uh, he's got red on him it's pretty easy to find him and once you deplete his meter for that second time it should give us the old w that's short for winning in case you didn't know and uh, then we'll go ahead and collect our character token k3r1 and be ready to go ahead and go back over to the death star because that's basically all that's left we do have one more kyber brick that we'll need to secure but we actually have to complete some stuff over on the death star side before it'll allow us to do that so uh, like i said lots of back and forth and it's up to you whether you want to stay over there and grind out some of those or not uh, if you're following along and doing what we're doing verbatim, then you're probably already back over here and you're getting ready to take another taxi ride one more time over to the crash site itself. So uh, we're going to go ahead and switch characters and take a quick peek at our character that we just unlocked, which was K3R1, shown down in the bottom left-hand corner there. And guys, we are out of here. We're going to actually recommend, if you have not already, talk to Buddy with the shovel over there. Because we're pretty sure that activates the second half of the mission over on the Death Star side. Which, you can always buy the rumor, but we're trying to save you some cold, hard studdage. And look at that. So we've got one more Kyber Brick. Everything else is handled here. We're going to the other side where there's nine Kyber Bricks and I do believe one character token. we got to get that gonk droid. There might be two. I, I guess we should have looked, honestly. All right, uh, we're going to go ahead and advance in. We've been here before, and you might have noticed there's actually a spot on the right with a kyber brick behind a red wall. So we're going to go ahead and target that one. And of course, there are some spots or a couple of terminals right in front you can smash. And guess what? It gives us some buildable bricks that allow us to turn it into a villain console here. We're going to switch on over to our favorite Finn villain. And of course, just simply repeat the process here. For us, it was up, right, left, down. And it's likely going to be different for you, but it might be the same. Woohoo, he says. It's going to go ahead and remove the red wall, and we'll get that Wreckage Repairs Kyber Brick, which happens to be 14 so far for the level. Now, we've already grappled down this point here, so that should be easy peasy for you, but if you haven't been here already, you might have to pull the plug down. And uh, before you make your way up the second ramp, you might notice a blue glow down below. We'll go ahead and hop onto the handheld, and we'll sacrifice ourselves to go ahead and collect this. Womp, 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 womp. I think it's funny. It's called treading water, and I actually couldn't tread water. <laughs> All right, feel free to talk to the astromech. It's not needed. It does just sort of tell us, hey, there's lots of stuff going on around here. And we're going to start our progress up this pathway here. And I'm going to look around. So you can see those circles that look like targets. Those are the super counters. Those are the bricks or the items that we're going to need to take out later for a kyber brick. Again, there are 10 of them. Sadly, I've already taken out one, so there's only nine shown on screen, but I show you exactly where the final one is, so don't worry. I got all 10 of them covered for you. And Basically, we're just going to follow the same path that we took already, uh, down and around, up the, the old rope, right by another one of those white boxes. And we're trying to get to that gonk droid over there, but we got to take the long route. I likely could have done a double jump and floated out there with my jetpack, but the last thing I wanted to do was miss the jump and have to, like, run all the way back up. Not only for my playtime, but also for, you know, having to edit things out and all of that. But we're close, but not quite there. I'm running all the way around, and nope, there's actually a nice little ramp off to the right that I can jump off of. In fact, we got to grapple to it first or jump in shimmy. Why no shimmy, Jingy? <laughs> you guys remember that? Why no shimmy, Jimmy? I tried, tried to make it work. Boo. All right, we're going to switch to a, uh, well, somebody that can speak gonk. And uh, in our case, we chose Anakin. And we got a quick little overview here. Basically, he wants to get to the top of the world, ma. And he needs our help to do it because he can't control some of these things. So he even mentions at one point we might need to use some of our special magic tricks to get him somewhere. So what he means is we might have to throw him by using the voles, which we will do at some point. First, though, start off by just pulling down that first little lever or ledge there. And, of course, it will allow him to keep on with the keeping on. And as you proceed, he will stop a few times and want to converse with you to kind of tell you, hey, I can't do this or I need your help with this. And in our case, we need to jump up and pull down another one of these little ledges so he can jump up onto it. 
Now, in our case, we're going to use this box that we haven't destroyed yet. If you've already destroyed it, you might have to use the astromech panel on the left and get those going again. But uh, if not, you just pull it up and let him jump up. And then we got to make our way to the second one. So I toggled my other character and let him get up a little bit further. Now, it turns out, too, we're actually going to need a blaster or somebody to target the bullseye up there, which will activate one of the ledges here that he will jump up to. And there we go. We're all the way up another floor here. And he's going to make his way over to this ledge and let us know he wants to be tossed. So we'll do just that, although it is a little sketchy throwing him. I, uh, First of all, I think you can mess this up. I think you can throw him down and, and like, mess that up. Or, or I actually think you might be able to, like, damage him. I don't know. I, I don't know if that's possible or not. I, I didn't actually fail it, uh, even on my scouting run on the PS4 save, I didn't. So, I, But I'm wondering... You definitely could make a mistake and throw him down a level or, or you know, the wrong place, which would be problematic. But in our case, we got lucky. Now, here we go. He says, there's no way to go forward. I need you to make a pass. So we're going to need to go ahead and activate these with the switch on the left here. It does take me a hot second to figure it out. Uh, I, I'm not trying to talk to him again. I was actually trying to uh, use the foals. But as it turns out, there is a, uh, a little target that needs to be taken out in order to get to it you got to use this pull switch over here go ahead and jump on the old handheld pull it down it should open up and reveal the target where you can switch to your other character and take it out now that should power up the ledge look at that he's got hops he got them jordans on and again we've got some more of these pull down sort of uh ledges we're going to go ahead and pull one up, let him jump to it, and then once he's on it, it should securely stay open because he's weighing it down, thus giving you the option to get to the next one. And look at that. We are almost to the end, you guys. In fact, this is the final step. We're going to get to the back. He's going to give us his little celebratory speech, and then you guys are going to see one of the funniest moments of this game so far. Ready for this? Ready for this? Someone's using a techno panel. <laughs> techno dance, techno dance. He's getting down. That's right. The first order officer is showing us his moves. And I got to be honest, he's got moves like Jagger. Actually, they're much better. They're pretty sweet. All right. This next one is called the Imperial Ascent. And you've probably noticed a kyber brick on the top, top, top floor. And it's a little misleading as it wants you to kind of jump out. And look, look, the arrow's like pointing, like, come out this way. Just... The water's fine. No, it's not. Luckily for me, my other character was still up here, but we got to drop down anyway, so uh, I guess it didn't really matter. I saved myself from that fall damage, which doesn't exist. <laughs> All right, uh, across the plank and over. We got to make it to these red little platforms, and I got really close to another one of those boxes. I'm so glad I didn't take that out. That would have been terrible. But uh, we'll go ahead and approach this villain terminal and... Follow the pattern here for us. It was down, down, up, down. And it should activate those red platforms. Now we can go ahead and jump all the way to the top. And there's actually a handful of handhelds that take us to the tip, tip, top of this area. So basically, we're going to be all the way at the top of the crashed Death Star. And up there, there's a couple of zip lines that we can actually utilize to go ahead and make our way towards... You guessed it, that kyber brick that's all the way up there, just floating around waiting for us. Just hanging out, if you will. And all you got to do is get up to this ledge, jump onto the old zip line, and don't look down. <laughs> just don't look down, whatever you do. Imperial Ascent c -c -c complete. Next up, we've got ourselves another kyber brick. This one's called Rewarding the Resourceful. And all right, this one's down the hallway. Takes me a hot second to... Uh, oh, no, this one's... We're not going that way yet. That, actually, down that hallway is where that password terminal is. And we need to go ahead and find the password itself before we can access that area. But we have a nice little uh, brick on the way to that. So we're going to go ahead and snag a brick real quick. And then we'll go ahead and swoop up the needed password to complete that next mission. And there's also, also, actually, in fact, I take that back. There's two Kyber Bricks. We get this one on the way to get to the password. And then there's one actually right at the password terminal, too. So uh, pretty cool. Pretty, pretty cool. And, of course, we'll jump all the way up because we've already hit that target. We didn't need to do it again. This one is pretty simple. It's another one of those four pressure-sensitive switchers. So you could, in fact, 
pull out not one but two protocol droids and split them in half two times, giving you four buttons push down. Or you could split one protocol droid, and down below we've actually got a, well, there's a couple of these floating around, but there happens to be one of the four boxes you can lift up and simply slam dunk it right on top, getting it uh, pressured it down. That's right. No pressure, no pressure. It's like lots of pressure. All right, we got it, and all four are officially pressed in, powering up that cage and giving us that brick. Thank you very much. All right, next up, we're going <laughs> to... Gonna reunite and it feels so good. All right, we're gonna drop right down below us. And there is kind of like a halfway spot there. Have you noticed this? There is a grapple point that you can actually leap up to. And inside that grapple point is a long hallway that we actually have not been to yet. So this is, this is pretty resourceful. And this one's called the Crash Site Crawler. So jump up, and on the right-hand side of the hallway, you're going to remove some debris, which is going to reveal a protocol droid hatch. Now, because I had my other character out as a protocol droid, I had to switch over and toggle him to somebody else, so then I didn't have to go through the whole rigmarole of actually going and selecting the characters, because I am not a fan of the new character select screens. I miss the old ones. I get it, it's easier to find what you need in some cases, but it's also lots of tabs and toggling and back and forth, and I'm not a fan of that. But, uh, you know, basically, you gotta make your way all the way through. You probably noticed that there was a halfway point, and I smashed the debris there, too, and it wasn't letting my top half through, so I went ahead and toggled to the bottom, and he made it all the way through, so now we're just catching up, and we'll go ahead and snap back into one piece here. And in the back corner here, you can see Buddy standing there. He's got a little uh, conversation happening, but we're not going to focus on that. We're actually going to target the brick all the way in the back. Okay, it's like we're going to talk to him. I lied. I'm such a liar sometimes. Really, he's just telling us there's a brick back there, and it's fun stuff. But we're going to toggle over to a scavenger so we can pull out the net launcher. Once we get that net launcher applied, we can actually hop up top. And then we've got a nice little uh, drop down. I'm going to switch to a character with the grapple ability because that's, as far as I know, the only way you can get out of there. So uh, we switch back to Django and grab that brick. So Crash Sight Crawler is officially ours. And now we have grappled our way back out of there and back into the room with the protocol droid terminal here, which now we're going to mark and, of course, get that other brick. So we need the password in order to access that terminal, which is uh, on another floor. This is actually not the password terminal. This is a way to open the door for easy access out. So we don't have to go back through that protocol droid hatch that uh, you know we had to split in half to get through. So now you can get out. That's easy. And there's the hatch right there, making it, uh, kind of putting it all together now. But before you move on out, make sure you swoop up this password for room 327. Now we're going to go ahead and take it. That We've all already seen it. In fact, uh, we saw it earlier when we were looking for those scrap parts for our, uh, well... Uh, what was it? P P Pain patine? <laughs> All right, down we go. And what we're going to need to do is actually access that astromech panel over on the left-hand side. Now, we just activated this thing not too long ago, but for some reason, it has turned itself back off. So switch on over to your favorite astromech droid and go ahead and solve the puzzle, of course, from the inside out. I still feel that's the best way. And go ahead and get those uh, pumping in and out. We'll switch over to somebody who can get their jump on. And we'll make our way up and uh, across the uh, next level up. we got to go all the way back over to that area. Like I said, right where we found those missing pieces earlier. So you got to walk the plank. And then it should be, I believe, down the hallway here. Yep, around, around the corner and then to the right. Hard right down. Here we go. All right, so I, I should have looked at the floor we were on because that would probably help out. But essentially in the back corner, you're going to find this terminal. Switch back to 3PO or anybody who can access this, your favorite protocol. And we'll scroll down to room 327. Simply hit the icon indicator. It'll punch in that p -p -p password and open the door, which the old Havy right here is going to go ahead and go, oh, there's my legs. And we're going to save his legs by throwing a grenade. So you're going to have to toggle to a villain character and blow that silver brickage up. Jump up, collect the protocol apart kyber brick, and also celebrate Buddy who has uh, reunited with his leg. So, you know, coming from a protocol droid, it's actually uh, pretty good, right? I mean, C-3PO has been split up, and it always feels good to get reunited. 
All right, next up, we've got ourselves a Kyber Brick, Lucky Loot Left Behind. And as it turns out, this one is actually a Silver Brick Breaker again. So we got to go find the spot and blow it up. That's right, find the spot and make it not. <laughs> All right, so uh, same floor. Should be right around in that first hallway that we passed up. And then uh, in the nice little left corner here, again, we were here earlier looking for those scrap parts for that mission back on the mainland. And you may have grabbed this along the way, but if not, Lucky Loot Left Behind is officially ours. All right, I love throwing these detonators because it just blows up anything nearby. Hey, and speaking of nearby, we're actually going to keep on with the keeping on. Go all the way back down this hallway to find yourself locked in this room. Uh, not for long. We've got a kyber brick trapped behind that door, but everything we need is actually on the left-hand side room here. Start off by switching to a character that can use the force. Lift up the box and press it on the switch like we've been doing, and it should reveal a villain terminal. Go ahead and switch to a villain if you don't have one out. Go ahead and complete the task force here, which is up, up, right, right for us. Likely going to be different, but uh, maybe not, maybe not. This should go ahead and try to open the door, but what it really does is explodes the console and uh, removes the old force field, preventing us from getting into this area. Now what we need to do is we need to press that button and activate the speech, but we also need to activate the speech recognition. Uh, and as it turns out, we also need to fix the console over here. It's sort of broken. As you can see, it's not functioning properly. So just to the left of where the hologram is, there is another terminal. Smash it. Go ahead and rebuild the bricks left behind into what will be a complete hologram pad. And press the button one last time. And if you made, if the timer reached zero, you might have to press that button on the other end of the hallway one more time and come back and hit it again. But... If you do it right, it's going to go ahead and open the door and give us access to the insecurity room, Kyber Break. So that's number 21, and there's only 23, and we know there's one more back on the mainland. So we've got to be getting close. In fact, we're going to go ahead and target another Kyber Brick right now, and it happens to be the 10 Super Counter Boxes. So uh, scattered around the Death Star rubbish is going to be a bunch of these white target-looking circles. Now, we've seen these before. Uh, we've seen them on Kashyyyk. We've seen them all over the place. Basically, these are items that you need to go ahead and smash in, well, not rapid succession, but you just need to get all 10 of them. Now, it turns out we're on floor, what, one, two, three, four, five, six, and there are three on six. There's also three on four and three on three. So three different levels have three boxes. And then the last box is actually on the first level at the very bottom. And don't worry, we'll show you again where it is. But as a result of us already having one, our count is going to be off. So uh, technically that's one. Here goes number two. And three is just across the way. In fact, you can see it from here. Uh, I'm tagging them sort of. I, I don't feel like each one needs to be tagged, but I do feel like um, each level needs a little bit of a identification. So on floor six, we got a couple of them. Or was it floor five? Regardless, we dropped down a floor, and there should be three more. So we grab the one over on the side. We're going to jump across the handhelds and the ledge. Make our way back to safety, and there should be one out in the middle. There is, but we actually skipped that one. There's one on the left. I, I actually just ran by it like a noob. Like, what a noob. So there's one out there by that hologram character floating around in the middle. There's also one right here by me. And to make things easy, I'm going to go ahead and target them just so I uh, don't get lost again. So that's technically five, even though it reads six, right? We'll go ahead and get six, even though it's going to read seven. Boy, I almost plummeted to my death right there. That would have been terrible. All right, so there's six right in the middle. So we've covered two full floors with three boxes on each floor, and then we drop down one more, and look at that, three more here. So we'll go ahead and pop this box. That's seven. And we're going to go ahead and hit eight. We're hiding behind all these other boxes. And then we're going to show you where 9 is. 9 is actually on the first floor. It's down below, right at the grappling point, the tower that you grapple all the way up. There's one right there, I promise you, right next to that astromech, right when you come in. And sadly, we got it at the beginning in our story. But Booyakashow, all 10 
So we showed you where nine of them physically were, and then I also showed you where that one sort of mythically was. <laughs> All right, so uh, one flaw to my plan here is that there is one character token left, and he is on the third floor, so we're a little bit lower than we need to be. So we need to go back up again. So we'll go ahead and find the rope and then make our way up. No, wait, what's going on? Where are you going? Oh, it's taking me. That's right. It's a funny angle. Psych, no rope. We're dropping down and going behind the astromech, down the hallway. And it sort of seems like we're leading out of here, but it's not. It actually takes us to a new area. Now, this mission is one of my least favorites. And, and the reason is, is because I run into that situation again where I'm destroying the Dianoga, but it's not depleting his meter. Like, there's like a cooldown. Like, I can hit him. And then there's like a five or six second period before I can hurt him again. So as a result, I actually removed a fair amount of this. There, there was actually five minutes of this battle that I removed. Five minutes. That is crazy to me. And there's still like five minutes of this battle. So, uh, okay, here's the thing. There are multiple Dianogas, and you got to shoot them all. You got to deplete the meter all the way until there's no more meters left. Now, along the way, a couple of the Dianoga heads pop up. And they have, like, some protection. One of them, for example, has a silver, I guess it's a silver helmet. We'll go ahead and use a thermal detonator or a grenade from our villain character that we just so happen to have out to destroy that top and allow us to continue depleting his meter. And there it is. Speaking of which, we'll go ahead and yeet that nade. Oh, yeah, Kishal. So once he pops up again, we'll go ahead and target him and remove it. And then uh, after that, another one pops up, but this time he has a gold helmet on. And we'll go ahead and use our bounty hunter to go ahead and remove that as the bounty hunters are the way to remove the gold. Get up close to it too, so it actually targets the helmet. Sometimes it actually lands right on it, sometimes it doesn't. Doesn't matter as long as you remove it. And okay, now we should be getting close to the old goldie. And then, sh oh, there it is. Booyakashow. And then shortly after we remove the gold helmet here, we actually just do a fade to the end of the battle because there's nothing else that happens. There's no other gold. There's no other silver. There's no nothing. It's just this really long, drawn-out process. Again, sort of what I was talking about earlier. Like, there probably only needed to be one meter to be depleted here. With all that's going on and the lack of being able to hurt them, and maybe I'm doing something wrong. Hey, if I'm doing something wrong, drop a comment down below and tell me how bad I am at this. But ultimately, my aim was pretty solid, and I kept hitting him. And even after I would hit him and do damage, it wouldn't do any more. So, like, right there, I only hit him once, even though I actually hit him with two bursts. So, again, it's just a really long battle. Thus, we removed a fair amount of it. But look, I even still left the end that was supposed to be just a little smidge of health, and it just takes forever. But eventually, we get it. We can go ahead and grapple our way out of here. We'll go ahead and talk to Buddy. And then we uh, we actually have a little more scaling to do. So we do have to use the rope and go up top one more time. So Dianoga Destroya. Done. Last item we need to take on is a Kyber Brick mission, which uh, we actually need a tip from a character here. Not that guy, but another guy. So we're going to go ahead and run back out and target the last mission. In fact, um, we should pull it up. And I think the spot we're looking for is sort of in the... Yeah, it's over there. So it's on the second from the top floor. And you can see there's an area we still haven't even been to yet. So jump out, grapple up, and start your way back up top. We're going to make our way back to that rope and climb up it. As I thought we were on that last mission, but I was, I was wrong. So we'll go ahead and get up topper. And up, up, up. Good thing for the jetpack, right? Right? A little, a little save a face there. All right, we'll go ahead and jump up and out of there. No worries about that white box because it's gone this time. And up and over. Let's see, the rope should be coming soon. And I'm checking the map, making sure I'm not needing to go that way. Nope, I got to go up a couple floors yet. And I do this a couple of times, you guys, because I wasn't 100% sure uh, on the best route to get there, but eventually I get it all figured out and we make it up there. But essentially, if you talked to Buddy back on the mainland area, the one with the shovel that I recommended you went and check out, if you talk to him, then there should be a Buddy here waiting for us to uh, sort of uh, continue. Now, if 
you get to this location and Buddy isn't there, I recommend that you purchase the rumor, which should be the last mission that you have for this area. There shouldn't be anything else. And then that should give you what you need in order to find Buddy. But okay, so uh, this is not it. We need to go around a little bit further and go down that hallway. So we're on the second from the top floor all the way around so you can't go around anymore. And then follow the hallway all the way down. And inside this final room should be a guy standing here. Again, if he's not there, definitely go to your missions for this area and purchase the rumor as it should unlock Buddy. But it say, look, it says, oh, did your friend, did my friend send to check on me? So, yes, he did. And what we need to do is we need to reveal three pieces that we can use the force on to fix that wall in the back. Really, it makes no sense to me why a broken wall on the Death Star <laughs> on the crash site is relevant to an item back on the mainland. But it is. So, uh, And I got a little trigger happy here and took out everything. Really, you just need to hit the corners. And then this other piece here should reveal. So there's three pieces. One of them's over on the left side. One of them's right in the middle. And the final one is over on the far right corner. That's if you're looking at the door, of course. All right, slap him into place. He's going to go ahead and radio his buddy back on the mainland. And he's going to be like, to the left, to the right. Booyah kashow, you found it. And then it's actually going to pop up on our map where before it wasn't which is nice. So we got, remember, Marco, the guy who was digging? That's who he's talking about. So here we are again. I'm going to go ahead and mark on the map. So I, I'm hitting circle, which is the back button for us. And although there's other icons showing, they shouldn't be there. We got the character. We got that other. There's only one brick left, and that's the one. And I've got it marked in the northeast corner of the main area. And we're going to follow this all the way back. But, of course, here in a hot second, instead of making you watch me drop all the way down and ride that taxi all the way back, we're just going to go ahead and fade out, I think. Maybe I lied. Maybe I just plummeted to my doom on my own. Oh, no. Yep, there we go. Got it. Yep, so I lied. So we only removed that section once. All right, so we're going to go ahead and hop in the taxi, ride it back across that crazy sea, and look at that. We've got one brick left. You see that? It's weird. It's showing 13 to 14. Anyway, so we're going to where we need to be. One-eyed Wookiee's treasure is about to be discovered. In fact, you're going to need the help of a bounty hunter, too, because it's got some gold protection. And this one's easy to find. So we're just going to go ahead and make our way up the right coast line. Uh, except we're not going to go well, the scenic route. We're going to go the, uh, the quick route. Google has routed us inside, and it's actually saved us about 17 seconds on our overall route. <laughs> You guys ever use Google? I use it all the time. Unless I'm walking somewhere. I very rarely use it for walking places. But, uh, all right. So we found the corner here. We just need to grapple or jump on these handhelds all the way up to the top. And then there's a big cave up there, which actually you can almost see it from the top. As soon as you get the cave opening, you should be able to see that gold tip. There it is. We'll go ahead and get our blast on. It should reveal the final Kyber brick for the area. One-eyed Wookiee's treasure. And then you'll have to pound, pound, pat yourself on the back. Easy for me to say. Because uh, that's another planet. D -d -d -dun -did. Now, we do have the space area. We do have another quick upgrade video that will be coming soon, too. And because we knew that was coming, I actually jump out. And there's a purple stud over here. I got to get it. In fact, I miss it. And I come back again. And I find a nice little cheese. You got to get up on the hillside there and then glad out. Ready? Ready? I know this is totally non essential, but it's a purple. It's a purple. Come on. All right, there we go. Kef beer crash site. Cook, cook, complete. 23, 23, 1, 1, 2. No, there's a lot of what? Five character tokens and one ship. I didn't leave that up long enough. Anyways, you guys know the drill. Head on over to any of our social medias. If you have not already, check out happythumbsgaming.com. More videos coming soon. As for me, that's going to do it. As always, until next time. Slip!